Hi everybody, this is Big Papa Grump. And I'm Golden Boy. And this is the season premiere. Season premiere! Season 5 of the Board of Doom Challenge. And we have Backlash. We're starting it off right. The co-branded pay-per-views now. Raw and SmackDown coming together. All the biggest stars coming together on one pay-per-view. Backlash. That's how we're starting out the season. I have a different view on that. So we're going to start off, we're going to do our picks in a minute, but I'd like to welcome two new members to the Board of Doom, uh, Flyboy, who was with us from the beginning. He was one of the original members, but he disappeared before we started doing the YouTube stuff. And uh, we found him, and he's back. And uh, RX Gambler, who's uh, just some random dude we found on the street. So they're going to be putting their picks in as well. So uh, we're starting to run out of room on the board itself, but, you know, I can write small. But you know what? Um, congratulations, these two. You know, and I know, they both go through a very rigorous testing process, you know, to join the board, to be on the board of Doom, because we are, you know, um, some of the top experts in the field of wrestling, or at least we like to think so. So I think the final question was um, for, what, what are their names again? Flyboy and Gambler? Uh, yeah. Uh, what was the final question there on the test that I think they passed with Flying Colors? Have you ever had a venereal disease? That was actually the first question on the test. The last question, and they both answered correctly, these gentlemen both well, celebrate yeah. Rusev Day every, every day. day. And that's the most important thing right here at the Board of Doom right now. All right, first picks. First match of the night, we're going to go with the Raw Women's title, Alexa Bliss versus the Irresistible Force, Nia Jax. Papa Grump, who do you got in this one and why? I'm sticking with Nia because uh, as awesome as the moments of Bliss have been, some of the best stuff Alexa Bliss has done since uh, coming up on the main roster, I don't see uh, Nia dropping the belt at this point. And you know what? I agree with you. i got to go with Nia Jax on this one over Alexa Bliss. I feel like Alexa needs a little break from the spotlight of that women, Raw Women's title or you know the SmackDown Women's title. She's been in the title on for the better part of the last two years. Um, I think she needs a break for it. And to be honest with you, I kind of like to see Nia Jax decisively win this one. Yeah. I want to see yeah. her steamroll through. Um, just something that I'm personally not enjoying too much with Nia Jax's character development. And it seems like the vibe of a lot of the WWE Universe is with me on this one is I'm tired of the tears. I'm tired of Nia feeling, you know, the insecure, getting bullied by someone that's five foot two, you know, 110 pounds. I want to see Nia the Destroyer. I want to see her just steamroll Alexa Bliss. Um, I want to see Mickey James get involved. I want to see her, you know, fight back, overcome, and just kind of bull through this match and, you know, put Alexa Bliss on the side, get her out of there, um, and then, you know, let it, Nia Jax go on to focus on somebody else for the next couple months over the summer, maybe a new, you know, fresh uh, Ember Moon. title rivalry, possibly Ember Moon, possibly some others. But you know what? Like I said, tired of the tears. I want to see Nia lift Alexa Bliss overhead and throw her eight rows deep into the crowd. That's what I want to see. Sticking with the ladies' first theme, we've got the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship match between the champion Carmella, sorry, and the challenger, Charlotte Flair. And much like with Nia Jax, Carmella just got the title. I don't see them taking the uh, title off of her. I think if you're going to build her up as one of your top heels, you have to let her get a sneaky, cheaty win. Uh, you know, in a title defense. So I, I'm going to go with Carmella on this one. And you know what? This this is the one match of the night where I feel like it's really going to tear at my heartstrings um, a little bit, kind of eat me up a little bit inside after Charlotte lost her money in the bank, uh, or lost to Miss Money in the Bank Carmella when she cashed in her briefcase, a little help from the Iconics after the beat down of Charlotte Fair a couple weeks ago. I had trouble sleeping, Papa. I imagine you did. I had trouble sleeping for that week. Um... But, you know, I, I've come to terms with it now. But, you know what? Here we go. The chase is on. I don't think it's going to be a backlash where Charlotte reclaims her title. Uh, the chase is on for the Queen. She's coming back for a title. But it's not going to happen at backlash where she's going to reclaim her spot on the throne. Uh, Carmel and the Iconics, they proved that they've been, you know, very sneaky, very underhand the last couple weeks. They beat Becky and Asuka in a tag match. Gave Asuka her first loss on SmackDown, you know, on her debut match on SmackDown. So... I think they're going to play a big role in it. Uh, I think Charlotte and Becky and Asuka, I don't really think you're going to see too much of them, if them at all, in this match. Uh, I just think 
things are going to break down. Carmelo's going to sneak away with a victory. Uh, we haven't really seen Carmelo in singles action in about a year as far as pay-per-view stuff yeah. goes. Yeah, it's been so, a while. So I think this is going to be a proven ground. I think Carmelo's going to show people that, hey, Melo might be money. So we're going to find out. And then, again, you know, I think this summer is going to be Charlotte chasing after that belt. You know, maybe some other things happen out of this. What do you think? You know how um, you were talking about how you felt after Charlotte lost the title? Mm -hmm. That was basically me when Goldberg beat Kevin Owens in like eight seconds. I couldn't sleep. It was terrible. It makes me cry every time I think about it. All right, our next match of the night. Uh, we got the big tag match. Looks like it might be a pretty lopsided match. Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, the Monster Among Men. Versus the Yet Movement, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Look, man, Fast Lane. That was a long time ago. They just keep doing ago. it to him. It was be it was over a year go. ago. It was over a year ago. Let you, it come on. You just just go on. Just go I'll on, be okay back. in a minute. All right, I'm gonna roll solo here for a second. Uh, in this tag match, Backlash. You see a lot of matches. I think a lot of people know feel like they know what's going to happen. This is, to me, going to be the sort of the night. I'm going with the Yet Movement. I got KO and Sami Zayn. They're going to pull off the upset victory. And why? I think there's going to be a little bit of a miscommunication between the Monster Among Men and Bobby Lashley. Possibly a heel turn. Possibly just some small friction, which builds into something else. Because ever since Bobby Lashley came, he showed up the Raw... Everybody loved it on the Superstar Shake-Up. Everybody got instantly excited. But over the last couple weeks, he's been a little directionless, just kind of floating along. Same thing can be possibly said for Braun Strowman. You know, he gets his tag title win with Nicholas at WrestleMania 34 to give the belts back the next day. But he's always just kind of just kind of free-floating through. No crystal clear direction, basically, ever ever since the Roman Reigns rivalry. So I could see Bobby and Braun just tearing each other up for the next couple weeks, leading it up into maybe some future pay-per-views, just to kind of just show the, the beast between the two of them. Um, I'm actually looking forward to that. I hope it happens. If it does, I think that's a surefire victory for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. That that really means a lot to me. I'm picking Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley because I, I just don't see them allowing either one of them to eat a pin right now. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn need to win in a bad way. Oh yeah, I would love for them to win, but I don't I don't I just don't think it's gonna be here. Okay, and what might end up being one of the more intriguing like outcomes, depending on how it goes, would be uh Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. See, you've got the whole Roman wins lol thing, which has been kind of off the rail lately because you know he loses at WrestleMania when everybody thought that was gonna be his crowning moment. And then all the rumors were going around that they were saving it for the greatest Royal Rumble. Um, that was a little nod. Where was to that it. at again? I, I believe that was uh, in the Middle East somewhere. I'm trying to think. It was Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia. Yes. And, yes, uh, yes, uh, and, and the I great believe city of Jeddah. I hear yes. it's beautiful. I hear it's beautiful. I was well. told that 800 times. 800 million times. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, but yeah, it was. Um, so, but everybody uh, against a or in front of a more pro-Roman crowd that was out there, and it still didn't happen. Um, botch of the year, by the way. And so it was, um, yeah, It's is, is it still Roman Reigns' lull? Or is Samoa Joe going to take it? Now, Samoa Joe, going over to SmackDown, probably their top heel. I mean, yeah, obviously Shinsuke is there, and we'll get yeah, to that sure. later. Uh, so are you going to have him eat a loss when he's going back and possibly going after AJ Styles or Daniel Bryan or somebody like that? Make him look weak before he... Because you know Joe's going to kill everyone on SmackDown. That's going to be his thing, probably. That's what we hope. Yeah, but are they going to do that? Are they going to give Reigns the win? So who we'll you got? Uh, I am... I am going to go with Joe. I really... This is the one that I'm picking based on who I want to win. And I want Joe to win. I don't necessarily, I'm not one of the, I've said it before, I'm not a Reigns hater or anything like that. But I actually think it serves his character better if he loses again and he's failing again. If you're trying to build him up in the eyes of the fans, even though I think it's too late. But if you last ditch effort to salvage him as your top face, then you've got to give him some adversity. And two title losses, then a loss to Joe after Joe talked all that trash. 
maybe they're rebuilding Reigns, and maybe they're going to do it right. So I'm hoping it starts with Joe. All right, pa Papa Grump's going with Joe. I'm going to go on the other side with this one. I'm going to go Roman Reigns. I know a lot of people know I'm a big Samoa Joe fan. I predicted last summer he would be the one that the throne Brock Lesnar. I'm eating those words. I still wish it would, oh so wish it would have happened, Joe. But anyway, um, I think this is actually going to be match of the night. This is the one I think it that could very well be. Is, it might steal the show. Um, it's going to be hard hitting. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be intense. You know, Samoa Joe has that just viciousness to him that I love. Um, but I think Roman comes out on top of this one. You know, he just lost at the Greatest Royal Rumble. He lost at Royal Rumble to Brock Lesnar after everybody was so smart and so sure that Brock Lesnar was, you know, going to lose. He was going to go off in the UFC and Roman Reigns would get his crowning moment again at WrestleMania. But you know what? WWE hasn't been doing that with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns hasn't been cons consistently winning. He's been in big matches, but he hasn't been consistently winning. Um, I think this is going to be a rebound match for him. I think this is going to kind of reestablish him a little bit uh, over Joe. And Joe, I f you know, he could take the loss, but I think Joe's going to take that loss. I think he's going to channel that aggression. He's going to channel that anger basically into the SmackDown roster after him losing. Well, and it's going to be exciting to see kind of what happens with Joe after that. Yeah, it is, it, it's entirely possible that Joe eats the loss, but Joe lo eats the loss and then goes to a different show against different people and then runs Ruxha and then you forget he lost at Backlash. It's entirely possible. I mean, look what they did with uh, Strowman. Strowman loses to Reigns and then a couple times. And mm -hmm. then, but it built him going forward because they did it in a way that still made him look strong and also at times made Reigns look like uh, an attempted murderer. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, it could go either way. I just, and, you know. And Strowman. They equally tried to murder yeah. each other. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But either way, I think it's going to be a hell of a match and I'm looking forward to it. WWE, my golden thought for today is this. When I was a lad, I used to love the background entrance. Those little swooshy, whooshy pendulum things. They were great. I want them back. I don't want to see the same old entrances with just a big video board anymore. Where you just spruce it up by maybe throwing a ladder on the stage or TLC or money in the bank. My golden thought, bring back the swooshy. And now we get to the most must-see match on the Backlash card for the most prestigious title in all of wrestling, the Intercontinental title. The title brought famous and prestigious to you by none other than The Miz, the challenger looking to regain his Intercontinental Championship, his prize against Monday Night Rollins, Seth Rollins, Papa Grump. Who do you got in this one for the IC title? Seth Rollins. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't see them, um, as as much as I would love to see something happen where uh, they take two of the same tier titles, whether it's the women or the mid cards or the top or the tags, and have one show steal the titles from the other show, I think they missed their opportunity to do that in the shakedown or shake up, so I don't think that it's going to, uh, to happen here. I think Seth retains, I think it's, it's going to be a good match, it's going to be a fun match, and... The only, the only thing I could see as far as like a weird swerve is if they are planning on turning Balor heel, if he interferes and costs Seth the title, but that would be, and I've heard that kind of bouncing around a little bit, but that would be counterproductive because then it would be on a different show. So I don't, I don't I think it's going to happen. He, yeah, maybe you might see something after the match, but yeah, I, uh, I, I think Seth holds it. You know, I agree with you. I'm going with Seth Rollins on this one. Um. I also agree with you that if they were going to flip flop the titles, those mid, I don't consider a mid card belt since the universal title barely ever gets defended. But, but, uh, uh, but you know, I, I think they missed the boat on that. I think if they didn't do it at the shake up, I thought I personally thought at the greatest Royal Rumble would have been a great opportunity to do it mm -hmm. to have you know um, Smoke gender or... gender win the U.S. title oh, yeah. in front of you know that uh, Middle Eastern crowd. And then, you know, with the four-way, you know, any of those SmackDown superstars, Miz or Joe could have came away with the IC belt. But we, I was wrong. I missed the bird on that. So I don't think they do it again this time. Um, but, you know, there's some, good, there's some good vibe in this match. There's some good things. Uh, Seth Rollins, especially as a babyface, this might be the best babyface Rollins we've had in a while. Um, you know, he seems into it. He seems like he's really enjoying himself. He's having a lot of fun. 
and he's putting on some really good matches um, along with The Miz. So I think they're going to put on a heck of a, sh a match. Um, one of the better ones of the night, I've already said, Reigns versus Joe is my pick to be matched at night. But this one, you know, could be pushing that. Um, but, yeah, yeah, it could yeah. challenge for that. Um, one of the things that you mentioned, Seth uh, kind of embracing the baby face. It, it's nice because when Seth was on his, um, you know, authority backed heel run when he was champ, you know, he had the annoying laugh and it, it just nothing seemed mm -hmm. genuine. No. Now, even though his, his, his promos, like his, his, his like on the fly stuff, uh, sometimes is a little shaky. It's some of the best stuff he's done since coming to WWE. It's, uh, He's really owning. He like it's like he finally figured out who he was, and he's way more entertaining to watch. And it, the pops he's getting from the crowd have been unreal, especially with the burn it down thing. I think yeah. the burn it down thing in the scene song it actually really helped it with that. So caught on a lot. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, so we're sticking with Seth, and uh, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that I think they're going to reward Seth for a lot of the good work he's been putting in, especially sure. his matches against Finn have been great. Every time they wrestle. It's it, like they're start. They're, they're actually showing that when those two guys wrestle. And I know we're supposed to be talking about the Miz, but uh, but when Balor and Seth wrestle, you see that okay, they do their moves of doom, and now they're starting to counter each other. But they're actually telling stories like they're learning about each other every time they wrestle. And you haven't seen that much in WWE in a while. And I'm hoping that's bringing on like a nice change that they're actually going to start doing more long term. Trying not to you know, have longer us forget rivalries. longer rivalries, or or when they do callbacks to old rivalries, mm -hmm. it's like they didn't just completely forget this guy's move set. Yeah. So, and you know, one other point I want to touch on with this match, um, you said we weren't talking about the Miz. Miz takes the takes the loss in this match. We all know the Miz is love for the Intercontinental Title, and you know what he's been, and he's one title went away from. Uh, Ty and Chris Jericho for the most intercontinental reigns, and as far as days held the belt, he's you know he's definitely near the top of the list. Miz takes a loss in this, but we know what Miz is on a collision course for. We know Miz wants Daniel Bryan. Um, hopefully, we get that around SummerSlam uh, because you know Daniel Bryan's going to have his hands full. He's got a target on his back. You know, after something like this, maybe the Miz can focus on another title, whether it be the U.S. or the WWE Championship. Um, even though, you know, the top of that WWE title he is pretty uh, heel heavy with Joe and uh, Nakamura and guys like that. But we know Miz is going to be on the collision course with Brian eventually. So he's got some time to stay away from this Intercontinental Championship for a little bit. Or even the U.S. Or the U.S. title. Um, you know, Miz has been awesome ever since his, you know, talking smack, however, however long ago. It seems like ages ago yeah. now. But he was great on SmackDown. He was great on Raw. Uh, Miz is going to keep doing his thing. So he could stay away from the Air Continental title for a while, and then, you know, down the road, it could be a very special achievement, you know, when Miz, if he ever gets that Intercontinental Championship, you know, that uh, that final title reign to, to tie the record. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens with Miz going down Or the they could do what we've kind of wanted them to do with him for a little while, give him a shot at the top title. That's what I'd like to see eventually. I'd, yeah. I'd like to see it. I don't foresee I it. Maybe, earned it. I don't foresee it maybe happening during the summer, no. um, but definitely... After SummerSlam in the fall, uh, you know, once we start getting around Hell in a Cell time, maybe, you know Survivor what I mean, after series. we get through, because, like I said earlier, we have Joe, we have Nakamura with that, you know, heel heavy at the top of the card, um, but yeah, definitely in the fall, I could see Miz reclaiming that title, I, I could, I could see it. Yeah. Alright, now we get to the United States Championship match between champion Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. You know, I've been kind of down on Randy Orton for a little while because, you know, I'm tired of seeing the same old thing. He hasn't been bringing anything. But uh, on SmackDown, they had that, you know, the Miz was trying to stir things up on Miz TV. And Randy actually showed personality. I mean, I know it was a brief flash. And he was like, no, I really don't care that Jeff, you know, did it, blah, blah, blah. And it was like one of those things where it's like, okay, Orton's just playing the laid-back veteran going up, up against another laid-back veteran, two guys that are just fighting over a title. And for Orton, I'm okay with that. Normally, I want some sort of story. I want something more. I want something to get me invested. It's almost impossible to get me invested in Randy Orton anymore just because I'm just I'm just sick of the shtick. You know, it's, it's, and it's not even his own fault. But, um, so, and plus I kind of hold, like, you know, 10-second wins over uh, Rusev against him. But uh, but this one I'm kind of interested in, and I'm, but I'm sticking with Jeff Hardy. I think Jeff's going to retain. 
here's how I kind of I feel about the whole situation. Um, and you know, if you want to chime in, feel free. Just getting through that Intercontinental title match, we're talking about Seth Rollins and The Miz, I actually kind of compare Rollins and Orton very similarly. Um, they're both excellent, mm. excellent, excellent in the ring, and you know they usually have very good matches with whoever they're in the ring with. Uh, but you know they both had very underwhelming title reigns. You know when Randy was uh, WWE champ, not even just when he was just fighting against Jinder Mahal, but even you know back when he unified the titles against John Cena, and after that, and yeah. you know before that, when, face you know, of the it's company just thing. yeah, like the whole face of the company. Like it just, I don't know, it didn't dig it. But then I could I find the two similar in the sense of like when they click like when they're into it when they seem motivated they're awesome and you know last year like uh randy you know he was getting that when he was kind of in his badass mode when he was getting in with the bray wyatt stuff um but and rollins is in that mode now to me i don't see that randy orton right now with the u.s title wins um you know even with bobby Roode going into wrestlemania you know the arcades and Roode, you didn't kind of kind of seem coming with the you know, just being the good guys or whatever. But I don't know. I don't see Randy being that invested. Um, I think Jeff Hardy's going to win this match. And I think this is just going to be one of those, you know, an old rivalry renewed type thing. But I think Jeff's going to come out on top. Jeff's going to be, a, we know Jeff, they want him to be a single star on SmackDown Live. Obviously, Bray and Matt Hardy are over on Raw. So we're not going to see Brother Nero anytime soon. But we will see Jeff Hardy as a U.S. champion, you know, establishing himself as one of the top single stars, um, one of the top threats on SmackDown. Um, you know, Jeff's kind of moved over for Raw, got out of those shadows, but he's got a really big opportunity to shine here. So I think this is more about Jeff Hardy shining and just kind of Randy Orton just kind of going through the flow. So we'll see what happens. You know, they might prove me wrong, but I don't see Randy very interested in this feud. He just I'm, doesn't seem to be bringing it. I'm seeing, right yeah, I'm seeing, um, he, like, he's... I don't wouldn't say I I think he's I've seen him less interested lately but at the same time you know it was pretty, it showed a little bit of personality it was kind of neat but I don't yeah again I also on, on the Jeff Hardy thing I think Jeff's out to prove that he's not just a nostalgia act I, so I believe that yeah and especially considering he's it's kind of unfair to compare him to Matt right now but I think he's, you know, he's trying to establish his own foothold much like Matt did. Maybe not to the same extent or the same way. He's not trying to match Matt necessarily, but he wants to be Jeff Hardy. Sure. He doesn't want to be the brother of Matt Hardy at this point. So well, it was I'm, a smart move to separate them, and but it's still to remind people they're connected. Yeah. But yeah, so. And let's face it. Um, when WWE was around, or when the Hardys were in WWE, you know, the first go through before they left, Jeff Hardy was always the popular one. Yes. You know, yeah. Jeff Hardy was yeah. world champion, and they know that, so it kind of, even though once they left, you know, how big Matt got, you know, the Woken shtick is, yeah, I still very much enjoy it. I do enjoy it, him and Bray Wyatt doing their thing. Um, but, you know, I just feel like this is the WWE formula where, hey, they gave Jeff the singles title, you know, he's a single star, they... I feel like, you know, the, the brass there looks at Jeff as the more money maker, you know, the more popular Hardy. So, um, I feel like this is a big opportunity for him to reclaim it, uh, you know, a top model in SmackDown. Yeah. He's going for it. All right, Big Papa Grump. Yes. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, do you know that history is actually going to be made this Saturday, May 5th, 2018? Do you know why? No, why? Out of all the Kentucky Derbies that have ever happened here, did you know that this Kentucky Derby will be the first one ever celebrated on Rusev, Rusev Day. Day? And what do we have? WWE, they know about this Kentucky Derby because what are they going to do? They're going to put their own thoroughbred, Mr. 76-Minute Man of the Greatest Royal Rumble. They're putting Daniel Bryan in a big-time match against Big Cass. Segway. Who do you got? Big Cass or DB? Uh, I'm going with Daniel Bryan, although I would not be a bit surprised if they put Cass over if they're going to, because WWE still likes to do the 50-50 booking, and if um, if uh, Cass is like going to be in a feud with Daniel Bryan for a little while, they may give him the win, but uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Daniel Bryan gets the win and then Cass just buries him afterwards. Obliterates him. And yeah, I, and I, that's I, what I, I think is going to happen. Um, I'm picking Daniel Bryan in this. You know, both men are coming back. From injury, um, 
That's just know, his, his first big singles match back from injury. Well, yeah, this so, like, is on a pay per view. Not you know? for nothing. This is Big Cass is probably biggest singles match he's ever had. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, but I he, remember, if you eat a loss to Daniel Bryan, it, it, it's almost impossible to for that to be bad. Yeah, it's not know? a bad thing. Um, I'm kind of with Papa Grump on this one. I see Daniel Bryan beating Cass, and then Cass can do whatever he wants, and he's still you know going to get booed, um, especially at this point because. He's just a big guy kind of saying some stupid stuff and beat people up. So he's going to get booed regardless. But I think he's it's more likely he just kind of cheap, you know, cheap shots Danny Bryan after the match. And they pulled out the little person shtick. I'm a fan of it. I, I, you know, this uh, I just thought it was lazy. Days. Was, it was lazy, yeah, yeah. but we don't, yeah. we don't have little people on like it was anymore. Yeah, it wasn't completely unamusing, but I was just like, oh. Yeah, the thing I'm thinking about is I wasn't even really disappointed in the little... Person act. I was more disappointed that everybody that came out in Montreal had the most stereotypical French names. You know, the little guy's name was Jean Pierre, and then the guys that the AOP just absolutely decimated on Raw attacked him. I can't even remember what it's like name. Francois, Francois, and, yeah. and, and whatever. I mean, I'm sure there's other people, French people out there with like besides those same three names. So sorry, France, on that one. But uh, well, yeah, French Canada in this case, French Canada. Oh, by the way, did you know that Canada is like Bizarro Land? Where they cheer stars that they were normally boo, and they boo stars they normally cheer. No, they just boo Roman. Well, after this match, when Daniel Bryan wins, I think all of Montreal is going to be going, we, 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 we. Okay, uh, real quick, there have been a couple times I've made references uh, that if anybody... I mean, nobody watches anyways, but I made a couple of Russell Talk references. I'm not stealing their little homages just for the sake of all that. All right, um, a big fan of Ollie and Luke. So, that being said, let's talk about the WWE Championship match. Let's talk about it. Uh, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, I was way leaning Shinsuke originally, and now I'm thinking I really want to see AJ and Joe. So I'm going to stick with AJ, although seeing a no disqualification match and uh, the world's most awkward nut punch actually be effectively used in a match uh, is worth it, but I don't think it's going it's, it's to amount to anything. I, I would love to see them put the title on Shinsuke, because if you want to build him up as a heel, you can't have him lose to AJ Styles three straight times, but much like Daniel Bryan... It's it doesn't hurt you that badly to lose to AJ Styles. Lose to him three straight times when they're trying to make you the top heel. Eh, but I think they're going to keep the belt on AJ and to kind of sacrifice Shinsuke a little bit. And I agree on this one. I'm going with AJ Styles as well. Um, this one was a tough one for me, but as you all know, I've always 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 pick AJ Styles on every board last year. And I can't change my mind on this one. But I agree in the sense that we've already seen that Joe wants AJ Styles. Joe's going to pick up the scraps. And, you know, he, he he's coming for AJ Styles. He's already declared it after Roman Reigns. Um, and we want to see Joe Styles. You know, we wanted to see this probably for a long time. Yeah. It brings back a lot of nostalgia to the fans that know that there's not only one wrestling company out there. Um, it's just a broadcast in HD. But I agree in the sense that... AJ as champ makes it better. Joe chasing him. Um, with Shinsuke losing here, I don't really know what direction they go with him. Um, it does. It would be very disappointing for him to eat a loss, even though I could definitely see him winning. Again, this one, this one's a tough one. I could definitely see him winning after getting beat, you know, both at WrestleMania and then at uh, the Greatest Royal Rumble. But, you know, maybe down the road we could see some, some triple threat matches between Nakamura, Joe, and AJ. That would be very, 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 very entertaining. Um, you know, very good matches. So, I don't know. This is, it's going to be an interesting match. Um, I'm definitely excited to see how it comes out on this one. Well, the one benefit to what has so far not been an overly convincing Shinsuke heel turn is that you're starting to see the strong style come out more because he can do it and it looks heelish. The kicks in the face. Yeah. So Just what, like you saw on the debut against Sami Zayn in NXT. Letting Shinsuke be Shinsuke, keep him heel, and stop with the freaking nut punches... And I think I you've got something. Punches. Yeah, they're getting old, though. It gets old, but hey, that's what gets people booed. Yeah, you well, know? yeah, that's but yeah, I guess if you're going to have him, because you want him booed, but they're barely booing him now as it is. Well, you know and what? they're only booing him because it's AJ. All these nut punches right now, all right?
right? I think on Sunday we might see one of the coolest nut punches ever. I'm saying end of the match, somehow, some way, AJ Styles, Pele kicks Shinsuke Nakamura right in the wiener. How, how does it happen? I don't know. It, it will happen. I hope well, it happens. Well, with those two, they can make it happen. I hope it happens. But imagine it in your head. Pele kick to Shinsuke Nakamura in the groin. Oh, I can't unsee it. Okay, so those were our picks. And as usual, I'm going to have everybody's picks in text at the end of the video. Uh, so other than that... Do their picks it? really matter, though, Papa Grump? I feel like... Well, they only matter if they're beating us. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't going to happen very often. Well, it doesn't happen to me very often at all. So, uh, but, uh, here we are. The first co branded pay per view. Defending, undisputed, Board of Doom Challenge champion. I just wanted to do that in a video. I just didn't have the urge to yell like Paul Heyman. So, that's been that. I've been Big Papa Grump. I've been the Golden Boy. And we will see you after Backlash.